Welcome back to Trading Matters, a podcast by OCBC Securities. In this show, we're focused on hunting down interesting market movements to help you become more opportunistic with your capital. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your Chief Financial Coconut, and I know, I know things are in a mess, right? <laughs> Everything is a little bit wonky now, but today we're going to focus our time to try to understand is the health of the US consumer still intact, right? And to do that, we're going to be studying two companies. One is Amazon and the other one is Visa to try to understand like, what are they doing? Is the consumer good? Is this going to be a soft landing or times are going to be really hard? So for all that and more, stay tuned. Okay, CK, welcome back. Uh, we didn't tune in last week, but you know, there's so many things happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, t- t- tell us, uh, how have you been and uh, how's the market? Is it keeping you awake? <laughs> well, it's a tough one, kind of, yeah. <laughs> tell us what is happening in the macro space because things look just wow. It looks like low can go lower, you know, like what is happening out there? Well, I mean, if you just look at the performance of the major indexes, so we look at Singapore, we look at Hong Kong, look at the US, you know, the STI has outperformed. The STI is actually the only one that's coming in total return if you include dividends. Just mildly positive uh, as of right now, you know. Uh, meanwhile, you look at S&P 500 making new lows for the year. NASDAQ new lows for the year. Hang Seng Index, Hang Seng Tech new lows for the year as well. Mm. If you look at NASDAQ and S&P 500, they're going back to levels last seen in November 2020. So, you know, we are looking at levels that go all the way back for Hang Seng even further, uh, all the way back to 2011 levels for the Hang Seng Index. And for Hang Seng Tech, it's all-time low because it was launched sometime in 2020. But if we even look at the back, the tested data or indicative data, that we can see on platforms like Bloomberg. Actually, it goes all the way back to about 2018 levels as well. So we are looking at new lows, uh, even as uh, you know the third quarter has wrapped up. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that's the current environment that we are in right now for the stock market. Yeah. But let's focus on US and Hong Kong, right? Because I think that's uh, specifically maybe spend a little bit more effort in the US because I do believe that a lot of our listeners um, have a lot of uh, a big part of their capital in the US markets, right? So, what are we reading? You know, is this whole situation? Uh, because of the war once again or is it like the whole inflation thing or you know because all these themes are just kind of running around but what exactly are you uh, for you specifically what are you looking at that's causing this and yeah, is there a way to turn it around well that's the thing Reggie because it does seem like there are so many different factors that are all coming in all at the same time but is there a single cause to what's really pushed the markets down to these levels with like S&P 500 down about 25% uh, year to date Well, the answer is really not quite a single thing. It seems like everything is really coming together. So we have, for example, uh, the inflation situation in the US, which we have talked about many times before in previous podcasts, right? So we talked about how inflation and more importantly, core inflation or sticky inflation, these are measures that still remain at highs. And that has actually pushed the S&P 500 down to its June lows. So that's the inflation situation. Uh, related to that, of course, is the actions of the U.S. Federal Reserve or the central bank. And we are looking at how, you know, to combat this inflation, the U.S. Federal Reserve has been very aggressively hiking interest rates of 75 basis points or 0.75% at a time and for multiple meetings already. Yeah. So we are seeing, you know, that kind of impact on the currency markets, the U.S. dollar outperforming major currencies. So yes, many, everything. So many yes, things. Yes all happening yes. and all interlinked as well. Yeah. Oh so, my goodness. I mean, mm. if you're asking what exactly pushed the S&P 500 or the US or the global markets down to this level, it does seem like, you know, all of these factors are really coming together. And the big question now, is, is there going to be a recession? When is the recession going to be if there's one? Or is there still a way for the US Fed to pilot us into a soft landing, which seems so elusive, but you know, <laughs> Potentially still possible. How, how potential? I don't know. Maybe a <laughs> few months ago, I would say, okay, maybe now feels a little bit hard, really. You know, but from your professional view of this situation, right? What is the likelihood of a recession? And like, what are some things that we can look out for to see if the situation has turned? Well, one thing that the stock market does seem to be hinging a lot of hope on is actually this thing called a pivot. So the Powell pivot or the Fed pivot, that's something that actually drove stock market prices or the S&P 500 uh, in particular, the US stock market uh, up from its June lows. And then subsequently, those hopes were dashed and it came down in September. And the whole idea about this pivot is, you know, how well the US economy can take the US Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes. 
So that is the big question on everyone's mind in the US that has really been pushing the stock market prices up and down. And along with that idea is the idea that, you know, the US Federal Reserve might be pushing us into a recession, uh, but how well they pilot the economy, you could say, uh, is really, you know, if they see a recession coming, are they going to pivot towards a slower rate of interest rate hikes or even an interest rate cut? And that's been a lot of hope in the market that's pinned on that. So uh, in that sense, uh, when is that going to happen? I would say you can take your cue also from the US Federal Reserve and what they say, because right now it does seem like the focus is still squarely on the fight against inflation, but there's a lot of hope in the markets that uh, if the US economy is not doing so well, that the US Federal Reserve might be forced to pivot and that's actually been pushing stock market prices as well. Interesting, interesting. And I think uh, another thing that people also look at is really the health of the consumer at this point in time. Uh, probably because there's not many other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> to look at already, you know, like so. So when people want to look at the fundamentals of the economy, very often in the consumption-heavy economy, we want to look back at the core of the consumer, and definitely in the US specifically, and many parts of the West, it is a consumption-based economy at this point in time. So yeah, um, there are two stocks that we want to highlight today, and CK want to bring us to the first one. Yeah, so the two stocks we're gonna to highlight today is actually running off the theme of the US third quarter earnings season. So the third quarter has wrapped up. Now we are looking at the earnings of many of these companies in the US. And we are going to be looking at Amazon and Visa as the two stocks because they're really focused on the US consumer, like what you mentioned, Reggie. Mm -hmm. So the earnings are upcoming on the 26th and on the 27th of October. And what we are going to be looking out for these two stocks is really in terms of consumption patterns, in terms of outlook for these two mega cap stocks, right? Both worth hundreds of billions of US dollars in terms of market cap. What are they really looking at in terms of their earnings and revenue and what's driving their earnings? Are they able to hold up better than expected or is the US consumption data coming down? We're going to be looking at clues of that from the earnings season from both of these two stocks. Hmm. So first up, actually, if you <laughs> I, I just want to, I just want to yeah. say, I just want to say it is interesting that in the past, you know, people look at Home Depot, we look at Target <laughs> to measure the health of the consumer. Now we look at Amazon and Visa, right? Times have changed. The world has yeah, moved on. it's a new economy right now, right? <laughs> so tell us, tell us about Amazon. What should we look out for? What is interesting uh, when observing Amazon? I'm sure this is a household name. Many of us have heard of them before. Uh, many of us might have subscribed to them as well. Uh, mm. And Amazon is really all about e-commerce, both in the US as well as globally. So they have other businesses and we might talk about that a little bit if we have time, talking about things like AWS. Uh, but really what we are focusing on right now is in terms of e-commerce data, in terms of the revenue that they are going to be announcing, whether that shows us clues on what's happening for the American or US consumer. So when it comes to Amazon, you know, many of us have heard of Prime Day. Well, actually mm. recently they have released a second Prime Day, uh, wow. which is also known as Prime Early <laughs> Access Day. If we just look at Prime Day and we look at how that has actually driven quite a bit of revenue and excitement for Amazon, uh, then actually this Prime Early Access Day that is just over, that also gives us clues of uh, what the US consumer is thinking and what their actions, actually more than their words, uh, are showing. So when we look at the prime early access day, it seems like early data that is coming out of it shows that, you know, even though Amazon is now holding two prime focused sales in the year, it does seem like the data is not that encouraging from Amazon because uh, we are looking at how sales and revenue that's coming out of this uh, second prime day or prime sequel, you could say, uh, is not really encouraging. It seems like the amount of sales that they're having is actually similar to just a regular day for Amazon. <laughs> so it's no longer as exciting as, you know, a Prime Day, at least when it comes they need, out. They need 12 sequels, bro. <laughs> they need more than one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I guess that's a, a, an indication of, you know, how maybe there's a little bit of consumer fatigue. It does mm. seem like it's an indication of how maybe inflation is starting to bite into the consumer behavior. And so, I mean, actually at the end of the year, normally or typically what we will see is there is a holiday spending or shopping season as well. But instead, what, uh, right now for this prime early access day, it could give us some clues into what the US spender or consumer might yeah. do 
for the holiday season. So so that is not very encouraging, you could say. Yeah, uh, not but, a very encouraging clue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> it, it really does depend on the upcoming earnings on whether or not they will actually elaborate a little bit more on how this mm. second prime is done and uh, whether or not analysts and the, the markets out there actually pay attention to what that reflects about the US consumer. Yeah, de- definitely. And I think for our listeners tuning in, uh, as a fundamentalist myself, let's also be clear that you know, Amazon is more than just a uh, website, right? AWS, like what CK said, which we don't have enough time to cover. If you guys listening in, you really want us to talk about these things, you know, we can do another special, you know, year end kind of thing that we pound out all these different companies in more detail, blah, blah, blah. It is true that it doesn't feel very positive about the consumer situation at this point in time. Uh, but does Visa tell us some stuff? Does it signal different? You know, is there any thoughts from Visa? So that's the interesting thing because while the data from Amazon does not seem to be so encouraging, the data from Visa suggests otherwise, you know. So Mm. actually the Visa CFO came out sometime in mid-September to actually say that there has been, you know, pretty strong spending that they are observing. And I mean, for all of us, Visa is another household name, right? We have it probably in our wallets and on our cards. Uh, and Visa along with MasterCard, they dominate the global payments for consumer spending. So uh, the kind of data that Visa has when it comes to consumer spending, it's uh, it's a little bit different from how it looks like from Amazon's side. And that is a pretty interesting way to look at things. So Visa, when it comes to spending, they are actually saying how you know the spending seems to be holding up a little bit better than expected. Uh, but of course, when it comes to what consumers are spending, then that's a different story. So we don't know if that's because consumers are spending the same amount, but they're actually buying less goods and they're buying mm-hmm. maybe more household essentials compared to discretionary goods. Uh, but at least in terms of spending patterns, what's coming out on the visa side does seem to be a bit more encouraging. So once again, the earnings are upcoming uh, in the 26 and 27 for Amazon and for Visa and paying attention to what the CFOs and what the CEOs say actually gives us a clue on not just these two companies, but also on the broader market when it comes to the US consumer. So I would definitely pay a bit more attention to their outlook because they have so much data within these companies as uh, uh, on their own as well yeah yeah maybe because people you know they're not buying goods like what you said right they're traveling they're going somewhere they're relocating they're buying house so you know those things don't appear on amazon but it it reflects on visa but um one question about visa is are you then concerned about you know all these exchange rate movements does it affect visa's business and even the whole crypto kind of rise right like like is it is are these pointers that we should think about when it comes to flows within visa well, definitely. I mean, I think Visa is a company that has been around for a very long time. Uh, but if we look at what their payments company, they're also at the same time trying to explore different strategic options. So actually recently in the news, there came out two pieces of news, both related to blockchain for Visa, mm. which is pretty interesting, I think, because it shows you that they're interested in the development of this space. Okay, so, so it's pretty interesting. And actually out of that fresh piece of news, you could say, uh, Visa actually started to team up with FTX. So that's a, a crypto exchange, right? And mm. uh, they started offering some of their products in collaboration with them. They also started to team up with JP Morgan uh, for some of their blockchain networks as well. What you mentioned about Visa and how you know it's being impacted by trends such as crypto, uh, definitely I would say that as such a large and dominant company right now, they are also at the same time exploring some of these new technologies. I would definitely keep a lookout also for what they have to say during their earnings calls for something in this area as well. Yeah, definitely. And they are a big company. They are very cash flow positive. That's why it's very easy for them to gobble up some of these guys, right? So, <laughs> so definitely think a little bit about in their, their earning report uh, coming out in, in a few weeks, right? In two weeks' time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, CK, come. Uh, in closing... A bit heavy to this <laughs> podcast. Like everything not very good, right? So it's okay, right? We don't want to be fake positive, right? We must be real with our listeners, right? What is the situation? What are we observing? But in closing, is there anything uh, else you want to add or anything specific that you want to spot or you want to kind of, you know, highlight for our listeners to, to you know, see, maybe look at some of these things and maybe it, it shows a sign where things turn around and you can do some swings or flows will come in. You know, are there some of these uh, other things that you want to share? Well, I think, I mean, the third quarter earnings season, like what I mentioned, 
Uh, we can look at both of these companies, but we also have to look at in terms of the guidance of the companies on what their outlook is for the broader US economy. The earnings season is ongoing. I mean, kickstarted by the banks, but also we have big tech. We also have uh, these consumer-related companies. And of course, something to keep a lookout for is the November uh, FOMC meeting or the US Federal Reserve meeting as well. So many different areas to, to look at. It does seem like the current market situation is very sentiment heavy or sentiment driven. So uh, a lot of uh, movements based on the latest news. And I think I said it before, but I want to reiterate that, you know, really having to be nimble, really staying on your toes and looking at what's the latest data. And even from a company like Visa, what their outlook is on the consumer that could impact other companies across definitely. the S&P 500 as well. So I would definitely want to keep my eyes peeled and to be able to take advantage of some of these trends as well. Yeah, Definitely, especially for a lot of the newer traders and investors, you didn't know uh, some of these huge companies, when, they, when their news come out, it affects everyone else, right? <laughs> yeah, so definitely. all these things, yes, definitely a lot of things to look out for. And I hope in the next few weeks, you know, as you keep coming on the show, we have uh, better things and more positive to <laughs> share with our audience. So yes, thank you, CK. Thank you for spending time with me again. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Take care. Take care, Reggie. Hey, thank you for tuning in weekly with us at Trading Matters, a podcast by OCBC Securities. If you want to be even faster in following latest market insights done by the team at OCBC Securities, you should visit iocbc.com slash trading matters for market insights on Singapore, China, Hong Kong, and the US, and a lot of the stuff that we couldn't cover on the show today. This show is jointly produced by the team at The Financial Coconut and OCBC Securities. We hope you become a more astute trader following our weekly show. And we want to hear from you. Join our ecosystem events and all that stuff details in the description below i will see you next week Music.